so continuing the 1970 CT70 build, uh, I have a few more parts that I'm going to put on today. The headlight bucket, the tachometer, and I have a lot of the cabling and throttle controls that I want to install. Uh, I've been meaning to actually put these parts on for a while. Last week we had uh, the threat of Hurricane Dorian off the coast of Florida. Fortunately for Florida, it didn't end up hitting at all, um, but it did get pretty close and everything got boarded up and uh, shut in for almost a week while we waited for it. Uh, again, thankfully it didn't impact us. It did impact the Bahamas quite a bit though. Uh, so if you're so inclined, donating to the Red Cross in support of the Bahamas is um, a group that needs a lot of help right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some of these parts on the bike, flip the camera around and get going. So just a quick unboxing to see what we've got. Uh, this is from uh, Fatimex. These are the folks that I got the uh, front forks for the 1976 CT70 bike from. And actually, on that order, part of the part of the bracket for the front forks had a scratch on it, and I ended up getting repowder coated. Anyway, Fat MX, I let them know about that. They uh, went ahead and credited me about forty dollars, which is what paid for this front throttle assembly. So, let me go ahead and pull this open. These should be all uh, genuine Honda parts. The OEM grips. And then all of the pieces I need, this is the throttle assembly itself that goes onto the bar. And we'll figure out how all of these other uh, pieces assemble up, but uh, all OEM Honda parts, so looking forward to getting that on. This, I believe, is the front headlight bucket. <clears throat> so the front headlight buckets for this year's CT70 are plastic. Because of that, I can't get them powder coated because at that temperature they'll melt. So I decided instead of going um, with the color trying to get close to the powder coated, uh, blue green that I finished the bike in I just go ahead and get chrome since there's a lot of other chrome on the bike and that that should match pretty well so this is the chrome headlight bucket from TV parts which I ordered off of I believe I got it from eBay and then I'm sure this isn't OEM but replica front headlight which actually looks very much like the one that I put on this 1976 bike and it also has the, the screw down here that uh, connects it to the headlight bucket uh, down at the bottom. TV parts also send me their stickers. I've got more stickers than I know what to do with from all these things I've been ordering. And then final box, I believe this is the, oh, this should be a few things. So this is from CHP Motorsports. I ordered uh, their cable package. So I had a lot of the cables, but I figured I might as well order all new ones since the rest of the bike is going to be new condition. So this is front end, let's see, I believe this is the throttle cable, front brake cable. is the speedometer cable. Anyway, I'm not sure which, let's see. So one's the throttle cable, front brake cable, speedometer. This comes with a rear brake cable, although I don't believe I'm doing a rear brake cable on this bike. Maybe I can return that or I'll put it up for sale. And then it also has a reproduction HK0 model speedometer it was a little more expensive than the other repos, reproductions, but it has the four different uh, gears indicated, whereas most of the bikes are three speed. This shows gears one through four. So that should hopefully fit nicely into the headlight bucket. it in yet but 
so that it mounts like this. All right, I had to do a quick run to Ace Hardware. I bought some M8 bolts, crush washers, and stainless steel uh, nuts. On this bike, I'm doing everything stainless steel from the start. I did have a few nuts in my um, nuts and bolts in my case from the from the other bike, but they're not stainless steel. On the 1976 bike, all the bolts where I just polished them up and put them back on, where water's got them on them, they've since rusted. So I've been replacing stainless steel bolts on that bike, and on this bike, I'm just doing everything stainless steel from the start. Uh, so getting this onto the bike is just a matter of uh, mounting the headlight bucket here uh, on the front fork bracket and putting the bolts, crush washers, and nuts on. That should hold it in place. Then the speedometer uh, has the has the rubber grommet here. Just a matter of sliding it in. There's a metal clip on this side right here that uh, keeps it inside the headlight bucket. So it has some tension as you press through. Oops. has some tension as you press through and then it's hard to see but right inside here there's an indentation that holds that metal clip to keep the speedometer mounted inside the bracket. So I'm going to get this on the bike, uh, the speedometer cable. Uh, I need to order the wiring harness to get the rest of the wires which will all sit inside of here for the ignition and the brake lights and any of the other controls that have the electronics. So I'll get this on the bike and then I'll start working on the controls. So one thing I noticed about the uh, rubber grommet that goes in between the headlight bucket and the speedometer is that the edge here of the grommet uh, isn't very clean it, just from the flashing or whatever the rubber uh, molding process is, has a slight edge here. And that shows in between the, the headlight bucket and the speedometer. So I'm just going to use some scissors and a razor blade to very carefully take that edge off just to uh, make that a little cleaner once it's installed. All right, here's a completed headlight bucket. Uh, here's the eight millimeter bolt to the washer, to the crush washer, to the nut on the other side uh, to hold everything in place. And the same on the other side, all of the hardware is stainless steel. There's actually two tabs that help hold uh, this all together. One is the, the uh, tab here on the front and this other tab is the one that's in the back that's uh, popping into this recession here on the uh, headlight bucket to make it nice and sturdy. I also cleaned up the flashing here along the sides to make that all look a bit cleaner. But overall, really happy with the way that it came out. Even though this is a reproduction, it looks uh, just like the original. And it's nice that it has zero miles, so all the miles will be reflected. will reflect the miles that I actually put on the bike in, uh, in this build. I have the speedometer cable attached to the speedometer now. Uh, and just it's routed down here, and I have it now connected to my drill just to make sure that it works. And as I give, and as I turn on the drill, speed goes up. So that seems to be working. Then on the wheel side here, there's a little fork in the end of the um, rod here that needs to line up with, I'm not sure if you can see inside there, but inside the piece has something that fits inside uh, that little fork. So it needs to slip into there. And then this just screws on. All right, here are all the parts for the throttle assembly. Uh, the two grips here, they're actually different sizes. One has a slightly wider inner diameter for supporting the throttle tube. Um, then these are the four pieces that you need to uh, link up to the throttle cable that goes inside the uh, handlebar itself. And there's a grommet here as it comes back out and then down into the carburetor. So we're just gonna go ahead and assemble all these pieces and get the throttle cable assembly finished.
All right, so throttle assembly is all complete. I just need to throw on the grips. And also for a more detailed look at exactly how all the components go together, I'll post a link in the description to Mini Bike Mike's uh, video where he does this on the bench. He has a, a broken piece of handlebar so that you can see very clearly uh, how the screw on the bottom uh, connects and uh, the other pieces that weren't as easy to see in the uh, single angle that I did. Uh, so to put on the grips, I always just use a uh, hairspray. I just spray them into the grips uh, and they slip right on. Then they end up, the hairspray ends up acting like a glue later to hold it uh, pretty tight. So I'm going to throw on the grips. All right, so I have the front brake assembly complete. Uh, I have the brake arm coming down with the uh, brake cable. It has this nice uh, boot that covers this internal spring and secondary spring. Uh, but everything looks really good. Uh, so I did figure out a couple things. One is I had the, I was trying to use the rear brake cable on the front. That's why it wasn't fitting. Um, and also this four, the four cable kit from CHP comes with, uh, out the clutch cable, it comes with the rear brake cable, which I don't need. So I reordered the rear, uh, I reordered the clutch cable and we'll try to return the brake cable. Although since I already opened the package to try to make it front on the front, fit on the front first, I probably won't be able to. And maybe I'll try to get rid of it on eBay. If somebody's looking for one, shoot me a note. Uh, otherwise the cabling looks pretty good. I've got the grips on and the throttle works. Uh, <laughs> I really like the way that the gauge cluster looks, or just the single gauge rod, the single gauge rather. Um, but everything's coming together. I just placed another order from CHP that included the clutch cable, also the fenders. I got OEM Honda front and rear fenders. Um, I also ordered the uh, engine guard that comes down here, and the horn, the light dimmer switch, and a few other odds and ends. Um, still need to do the. Uh, wiring harness, the seat, the taillight bracket, the taillight, and that's going to get me pretty close to being done. So uh, stay tuned, hopefully maybe a couple more videos and this bike will be uh, all finished.